So my name is Suzanne Mermelstein, and I own Mariposa Bakery. And today I'm going to show how I make challah here. Um, it's a bread that's a Jewish bread used weekly for the Sabbath, but it's now completely a popular type of bread that people, whether you're Jewish or not, people eat challah. This is um, going to start with a cup of water. This will make about enough challah for two one-pound loaves. Um, take a tablespoon plus a teaspoon of yeast. Um, then a quarter cup of honey. And basically, the water and the yeast and sugar, whatever kind of sugar type, whether it's honey or sugar, is you know, food for the yeast basically and helps it get bigger. Besides being sweet, it also, yeast feeds off of the sugars and makes everything big in bread. So um, that goes in first. Then I use about five cups of high gluten flour. It's a bread flour. It just has higher protein than regular AP flour, um, all-purpose flour. And it's this challah that we make here has eggs and honey. It, you can also make it without being enriched. It can also be just a water challah that um, that also works well. And after we get all that inside, put the we're going to go over to the mixer and put on the hook. We use a dough hook for all the breads. And usually the deal with bread is I try to keep the yeast, the water at the bottom and salt always at the top. You don't want the yeast and the salt to mix together. They both do exactly the opposite actions. The yeast makes it big and the salt retards the the growth, so it's kind of a balance and you don't want it to be together. And then you just have it going and you also add oil, a quarter cup of vegetable oil. And while it's mixing, you just want to check to see that it's not too wet, not too dry. You can basically adjust minor amounts of water and flour as it goes. Um, so usually once it's kind of gathered into a ball, I just sort of check it to make sure that it's not too dry, not too wet once it comes together. Just needs just a little bit more. And then you can just let it go for about two to three minutes. You're going to let the mixer go and when it's done I usually just I'll put it out on the table if you're doing it by hand you can also do this all with a wooden spoon and um, then you're gonna need it most of the time I'm just gonna need it at the end of this um, process as soon as it comes together I'll need it on the table I'm basically going to take it out and finish it off on the table by kneading it by hand. You just want to put a little flour down. You don't want to incorporate too much flour when you're doing any bread dough. Um, you just want enough so that it's not too sticky like it is right now. Um, So I just finished mixing the dough, and I'm gonna, it's not at its finished state, so I'm just going to knead it on the table. And kneading it is just adding a little bit of flour, and you do these quarter turns. You fold the bread in towards about halfway into the dough mass, and then you turn it a quarter of a turn. And you just sort of get in a rhythm of it, and you kind of keep doing quarter turns, and you just get it till it's pretty much a smooth mass of dough. 
and um, since most of the dough was, it was mostly mixed on the mixer, but I'm just finishing it off here. If you're doing it all by hand, it takes like about five, a good five, six minutes of kneading till it smooth and smooths out and you just want to make sure you don't, um, you're trying to keep it smooth and not to the point beyond smooth when it starts to rip. Um, it just sort of destroys the structure of the bread, but um, but that's pretty much what you want. It's like a smooth, fairly smooth dough. And then you just want to put it in an oiled bowl and cover it. And this is going to be the first rise. So it's going to probably take about an hour or so in a warm spot till it rises. And then you can take it and shape it. And then that will then rise for about an hour after that. OK, so I'm just, now the bread has been rising for about an hour. And I'm just going to take it out and shape it into the braided challah loaf. And I just measure out each, um, each length of the braid is about four ounces. So it's a one pound loaf. And I do a four braided, four strand braided loaf. Sometimes there are three, but this is just the one I do at the bakery. Let's see. So each strand gets rolled out to a long cylinder. So basically, it's just three or four equal lengths. And you just pinch one end, and then the rest of it gets braided. Um, for the four strand one, you basically take the strand on the left, bring it over the two of them, Take the right one, bring it over two, and then you twist the middle. And you just keep doing that over and over again till the whole thing is braided. Um, kind of, you know, these are, it's not super tight, but it's not that loose either. Then you pinch the end. And this is, this is basically the shape it is before um, we proof it now for the second time. And we're going to put it into the proof box for the next half hour. And that's it. So now I'm t I just took out the hollow loaf from the proof box or from the warm spot, wherever. It's about double in size. This is about the difference between a freshly braided loaf, and then after it's been sitting for a while in a warm place. You want it a little puffy. Everything's like a little puffier over here. And then you just want to take a little bit of egg white, or you know whatever you have, uh, some kind of egg wash, either white or you could use some yolk too with water. And you just want to brush it on to the top of all the strands. Um, this just glazes the dough. It's just a traditional way that it's done. Um, it'll be shinier when it comes out of the oven when you do this. And you can either add, you can leave it as this is, or you can add sesame seeds or poppy seeds to the top. Um, we do them plain here. So after it's brushed on, you're just going to put it in a, we have it set at, it's about 375 degrees, the oven. And it's going to be anywhere from 35 to 45 minutes of baking time. And just going to stick it in now. It's 
set the timer for about 15 minutes so that um, in this oven we have to spin it. Uh, it doesn't bake evenly. And, and a lot of times home ovens are the same way, that you have to you know, spin it so that it all browns evenly instead of one little spot here and there. So we're just going to let it go and then check back in 15 minutes to spin and then a half hour to take out. So the bread's ready now and we're just going to take it out of the oven. So basically you're visually just checking it out so that it's golden brown, which is what it is. Um, I just sort of feel that it's pretty hot. and. You just want to make sure that all the sides and all the top are just a uniform brown color. And it's done.